In this video, we are forecasting a multi-day severe weather event across the U.S. The Storm Prediction Center has put out a slight risk of severe weather today, an enhanced risk for Monday, a rare day four 30% outlook for a potential tornado outbreak on Tuesday, and even a highlighted area on Wednesday in the southeast. The time to prepare is now as severe weather season has arrived. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Yesterday, we were live for nine hours with coverage of the severe weather. The action carried all the way into the evening hours as big storms brought tornadoes, damaging winds, and hail into places like Panama City Beach and even up into Kentucky and Indiana. Today, severe weather is possible again as the Storm Prediction Center has put out a slight risk of severe weather. From all the way up here into Syracuse, New York, Ithaca, down the I-81 corridor into Scranton and Trenton and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and then there's a secondary area down here from Charleston, South Carolina through Savannah, Georgia, and yes, even a little part of Northern Florida is is included in this, okay? Once again, that's a slight risk of severe weather. Let's really nail down the timing and everything as we look at the future radar for the whole U.S. There they are. You see that? Supercells popping up over here in Pennsylvania and New York around 2 p.m. Eastern today. We also have some heavier rain showers coming into the West Coast around this time as well, but the main area to watch is going to be over here in the Northeast as a cluster of severe thunderstorms will be the star of the show around 5 p.m. today from Syracuse all the way down into southern portions of Pennsylvania. Large hail, damaging winds, and the very isolated chance of a tornado is going to be what we watch out for the most all the way through 9 p.m. And then this really is just going to turn into a big blob of heavy rain and maybe a couple claps of thunder as it gets into New England. You can see by the time we get to midnight tonight, we've also got a couple more rain showers down here in the southeast and the precipitation in the west has moved into Montana, Idaho, and Nevada. We are having fun in the sun there in the central U.S. all the way through 5 p.m. tomorrow, but that's not going to last long, okay? Let's see what else happens here. On Monday, things are kind of quiet, okay? But you you can start to see that there's something going on over here. This is as far out as the future radar is going to take us, okay? But if I was able to push this out just a little bit farther into the afternoon period, like magic, you would start to see big time convection popping up down here in Texas leading up to our severe weather event. And we are going to talk about that super in depth right here in a second. But first of all, speaking of magic, we got to thank today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, a fantasy themed online role playing game. There are over 600 champions you can choose from and customize to your liking and there's a ton of fun and challenging missions. This game takes place in Teleria, where elves have long been at war since the Dark Lord took over. Now divided into High Elves and Dark Elves, it's up to you to take on the Dark Lord and restore peace to the land. The character named Ghostborn is my favorite because I like support characters. Right now is the best time to get started in Raid, and if you click the link in my description or scan the QR code right here on the screen, you're gonna get unique bonuses worth 30 bucks. We're talking free champions, energy refills, XP boosts, and more as soon as you download. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. And now, let's get back into the video. All right, let's really get into the meat and potatoes of this video as we are looking at a day three enhanced risk of severe weather for eastern portions of Texas and western portions of Louisiana. I got a real bad feeling that this one's going to be a doozy, guys. I'm not kidding. Day three enhanced risk over here means that there is a real possibility that by the time we get to day one, this could end up being a moderate risk. Am I saying that that's going to happen? Absolutely not, but it is a possibility. So if I am in the Dallas area or point south and east towards Waco and Tyler, College Station, North Cleveland, and Hemp Hill in Texas, I am paying extra close attention to the weather. And why should you be paying extra attention to the weather? Well, let, let me explain. Okay, so we're looking at the 500 millibar wind speeds here, and you can see that we got this big elongated trough dipping down into the western portion of the U.S. And what do troughs do, guys? It basically just allows air to flow in the middle and upper levels of the atmosphere. And what happens up there greatly determines and changes what happens on the surface. We're going to have this trough digging down here, which is going to allow for all of this air from the Gulf of Mexico go that warm rich moist air to advect up to the north and then also we're going to have a big area of cold air especially stacked up higher in the upper levels of the atmosphere and of course we're going to have some surface level colder air as well and wherever those things combine we are going to see some big old thunder boomers also it's important to look at the position of the trough this is a neutral or slightly negatively tilted trough which does allow for that interaction between the warm and cold air to happen in a way that promotes severe weather and if we go even closer to the surface here, things get even more concerning as we start to take a look at our nadir juice. Lower level jet wind speed is what I call nadir juice, okay? You throw this stuff in combination with the energy and the dew points and stuff, and buddy, you've got yourself a concoction that's going to produce some nadirs. Look at this. We're at 70 to 80 knots right down here into that enhanced risk area around 8 p.m. 
And look, if I go back to 5 p.m., it goes even further south. So, and you're probably thinking, Ryan, why doesn't it matter that, you know, we're, we're really high up here into portions of Oklahoma? Well, I'm not comfortable saying that there's absolutely not going to be any storms up here, but this stuff is only nadir juice when you mix it with the right ingredients. And one of the more important ingredients is uh, dew points. So up here in Oklahoma, we're only at, you know, a 40 to 50 degree dew point, which is actually not very supportive of severe weather. If you want severe weather, you want to look for 57, 58 degrees or higher, especially once you get into the mid 60s or even close to the 70s. That's some juicy nadir juice. And really, whenever you combine that with the 850 millibar winds on top of it, you throw in a dry line and that is just a recipe for big time thunderstorms for real. And you can see that this moisture is going to build up and move off to the east as we go all the way through 11 p.m. And it's along this line and just to the east of it where we expect some of the biggest storms to form. Now, there are some good signs here, okay? The fact of the matter is, is the parameter space is pretty high. Uh, and the fact that we have so much moisture and there's not a lot of anything stopping storms from forming, that could mean that we just get a lot of crap vection down here. Normally, you call the formation of showers and thunderstorms convection. Storm chasers like to call it crap vection, okay? Because the more of that you get, the less energy individual storms have to work with, and you don't have to worry as much about supercells and tornadoes. So hopefully that's what happens down here. All of this moisture promotes rapid storm growth, and we don't see individualized discrete supercells. However, if we do, it's nadir time. So prepare now for what could happen down here. If you're in that enhanced risk, make sure you have a plan in place as to what you're going to do if or when that tornado warning comes through, okay? All right, so it doesn't stop there, okay? This does carry into Tuesday as well. The Storm Prediction Center does have that 30% risk, which we are looking at right now. And the wording that goes along with this is actually pretty concerning. So I'm not going to read off the whole thing, but they start off by saying that there is a reasonable probability of a regional type tornado outbreak centered over central and southern Mississippi on Tuesday. That is very strong wording from what is a usually conservative Storm Prediction Center, especially beyond day three. They go on to say that the parameters behind this event fall within the high end parameter space for significant tornadoes. I've certainly never seen that said on a day four outlook. So the Storm Prediction Center is a group of the best meteorologists on earth. The reason we're reading this together is because I think we should take their words seriously. And if you continue reading, they say that a high end environment appears likely and the potential is supported for a substantial outbreak of severe supercell storms. So let's dive into the weather models now and try to figure out some more localized impacts for you. Okay, so here's that trough coming in. Watch how it really increases in strength as we get into the early morning hours and midday on Tuesday. Let's stack the nadir juice on top of it. And there you go, 70, 80 knots around 2 p.m. And that's gonna last all the way through uh, possibly 8 p.m. as we get a little bit further to the east. Does the moisture line up? Well, yes, it does. In fact, it looks a lot more concerning over here than it does in Texas on Monday, uh, where we are approaching 70 degrees uh, with our dew point there. And that's gonna carry us all the way through uh, into the evening hours. Once again, these are very high end parameters for a March tornado outbreak. Uh, however, our saving grace once again might be the fact that we're gonna have just so much crap vection, so much rain and thunderstorms forming that we don't see a, a big time discrete supercell environments. And if that happens, we're still gonna see a big severe weather outbreak, but the tornado potential will be much lower. We won't know a whole lot of details on this until tomorrow, whenever those convection allowing models start to get into range. No matter what though, you need to go ahead and get your severe weather plans, uh, your tornado precautions. You need to get all that stuff worked out right now because something is going to happen here. All right, and that severe weather threat is going to carry over into Wednesday as well. Around 1, 2 p.m., we're gonna see those dew points uh, really start to spike up down here in Florida, Alabama, Georgia. These are some of the areas that were hit yesterday. And yes, we are talking about another significant risk maybe on Wednesday. However, it doesn't look as bad as the Monday and Tuesday events, okay? Now, things are gonna change. The closer we get to the event, the more we will know. But as of right now, it does look like a more linear type event. We'll be moving through the Southeast on Wednesday. And even on Thursday, we're gonna continue to have a problem potentially with severe weather uh, way out here on the East Coast and into Florida, okay? So this is gonna be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday type ordeal. So we're gonna be with you pretty much every day uh, this week or for the next you know seven days or whatever it is. Just make sure you keep tuning in and I promise we're gonna keep you updated, okay? Here's the plan, guys. I'm gonna have another in-depth video update tomorrow. Then it looks like Monday I will be doing a long live stream, possibly close to 12 hours. Tuesday is almost certainly gonna be another 12 hour long live stream. Wednesday is still up in the air. I'm either gonna do a forecast video or I will be live once again on Wednesday. Thursday, I'm leaning 
leaning more towards just doing a video. So it's a busy week, guys. Please subscribe, follow me on Twitter, follow me everywhere so you can keep up with everything that's going on. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.